30, we have finally come to a top five of my top 25 of favorite Southern hip hop albums. And I'm, I know you guys have been on this ride with me. I really appreciate you guys for watching, checking it out. Um, go my, my part one, my part two, part three, part four. You know, as I break down from 25 all the way up to six. So in this video, I'll be doing five through one. Um, also, too, if you um, if this is your first time coming to the video, make sure you click. I got the link in the uh, description box. I got the links to the previous uh, four uh, videos, uh, part one through four, should be in the description box as well as the list of the albums that I'm going to name right this minute or in a couple of seconds or whatever. Um, also, follow me on the socials: um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you know all that stuff make sure you guys subscribe if this is your first time you know and if you like what you see the videos subscribe uh, appreciate it appreciate you guys appreciate you guys always watching always commenting always hit me up on Twitter actually I'm getting more feedback in the YouTube section than I am like on Twitter after I uh, share these videos thank you thank you for you guys for sharing whether it's on, from the Facebook page or it's from my Twitter or you sharing it from YouTube really appreciate you guys and with that being said, hey, let's get this let's get this final final video going, man. I'm gonna uh, go with my number five, so let's let's get started. At number five, I have Outcast Equipment Eye. Uh, you know, hey, what can I say? Outcast Equipment Eye, this album right here. I'm pretty sure you saw me review this album on my channel when I was doing classic reviews. Now we're doing classic albums on Dead Hip Hop Pace, which is why I stopped doing it on my channel because. You know, I didn't want to overlap, which it ended up happening. We ended up talking about an album that I already kind of talked about in depth in here. Now, by the time we reviewed on Dead and Hip Hop, I didn't really have much to say. But, I mean, if you want to check it out, I might put that video in the description box too. Check out my classic album review of Equipment I put it on my, on this channel as well. I'm going to put that link in there in the description box as well for you guys to watch that. But, yeah, man, Equipment I, I mean, what can I say? This was the album that really, really put Outkast on the map. Uh, mainstream wise uh, musically they was going uh, just even more of another level than they was from the previous even though sonically you know I like ATLs better sometimes I, I it just depends on my mood I might like equipment out better I might like ATLs better but you know it's equipment out just just in 98 just and that was like that was also a good turning point that I felt that like not only the UGK but like Outkast was like southern artists was being featured with like New York cats and other cats from other coasts, which was I think which was dope in that that particular year. So um, yeah, man. I mean, what more can I say, man? Equipment I just such an amazing album. Uh, you know, I, that that album, like I've said before plenty of times, I'm pretty sure some of the fellows fellas on Dead and Hip Hop echo my sentiments, but like this took Andre just to another level. It, it, it started to separate him as far as the caliber MC level from Big Boy. No disrespect to Big Boy. Like I, like I said, I love Big Boy. But um yeah I just yeah equipment I man just a, a freaking amazing album so yeah, this is definitely my top five at number four I have a ball and MJG coming out hard uh, debut album from them man like still still to this day that's just one of those albums that I like play a lot um, especially from it coming from the south along with um along with like the whole rap a lot scene you know Ghetto Boy Scarface like they, their beats. Their beats was, you know, that those beats was like on some just smooth, riding, pimp, soulful type shit. Like, it was really different from the South. You know, especially at that time when South, South was still kind of making its mark in the hip-hop culture. And, like, for this album to come out, and, like, it, like I said, when I listen to it now, it's like, damn, this shit was just so, like, so gangster, so smooth and pimped out. Where, you know, you listen to most stuff in the South, it was all about bass partying fast you know it was like booty shaking like type of music so like with them and, and ghetto boys was kind of more of a serious more of a serious content more serious type beats soulful type beats man a lot of instrumentation as well um it's just dope man suave house like that that kicked up like the suave house back then man we used to have suave house records man back in uh in, in memphis tennessee man so yeah coming out hard man just that that's like one of those albums where i can just pop in and just let it play and don't even touch it. Like A Ball and MJG, for that to be that was a strong debut. And they still they was able to still like make solid solid albums after that. So I mean it's not like saying they just fell off after they made their debut. But yes, man, coming out hard, that was a perfect title for a debut album for this group, man, with A Ball and MJG. So there it is, my number four, A Ball, MJG, coming out hard. 
At number three, I have Juvenile with 400 Degrees. This album here, man, like, and it's so amazing how, like, this album grew on me so much. Not saying I didn't really hate it, hate it, but, like, when it first came out, I was kind of like, oh, okay, it's, okay, cool, there's these, these cash money dudes, you know, that's the, the main for the big timers, the BG guy, like, you know, I'm like, okay, so this is Juvenile, this is, this is, this is their guy. And at the time, I always thought that was his debut album, which was, that was his second album. So he had made an album called Soldier Rags, I think, like, the year before, in 97. So then this dropped in 98, and man, like, in my opinion, that's what that's what made me, like, really open my eyes to, like, Manny Fresh as a producer. I'm like, yo, this Manny Fresh dude, he, and you know, just more, I was just digging and learning more that he just, like, produced the entire discography for Cash Money at that time, and for, like, the next few years before they break up and everybody went their separate ways. But, yeah, man, like, Manny Fresh, Juvenile, this put Juvenile on the map, this really put Cash Money on the map nationwide like i'm just saying nationwide because i'm speaking for someone that's that grew up in detroit that was that was in the hip-hop when i was living in detroit so yeah like even in us in detroit we got we caught we caught the wave like 400 degrees it caught the wave nationwide everybody was on the hill even jay-z ended up being on the remix of huh so like that's how crazy that that shit put cash money records on the map like that was this was a time when like cash money was on their way up and like No Limit was like on their way down. Like this was like No Limit Run was starting to be over and Cash Money Run was just getting started. And 400 Degrees, man, another album I can put pop in, let it play, don't touch nothing. Like that shit was so, like I was like, man, this was such a Southern classic back, th back then when this came out. Like this shit was so fucking dope. Had perfect beats, ride music. And then like I said, this was a time where I had like 15s in my car and shit so like this i mean all this was just perfect man like juvenile like someone we never heard no one like juvenile at, the, at that time especially coming from the south like just the way he rhymed and the way he had different flow patterns and stuff on this album which is pretty cool it was pretty it was pretty dope like not looking back at it ro retrospect it was like damn like juvenile was actually a dope rapper like he was actually pretty dope um back then of course back then doing the so-called ending of the second golden era where you had New York, you know, Wu-Tang, Raven, like, it, it, back then it was like, oh, okay, he, he already right rapping, but like, it's in retrospect, like, we've never heard no one like Juvenile, he was so new and just like, so different at that time, man, but yeah, man, I had the classic back that ass up, I mean, that's like, that's a barbecue hood classic to this day, so, um, but yeah, I mean, just, if you have not listened to Juvenile 400 Degrees, if you like that type of music, just still give it a listen. I think I've talked to, we told Mike C-Town to give it a listen. Cause I don't think Mike C-Town gave that album a full listen. So Mike C-Town, if you're watching this, go listen to that album, man. Ch check it out. Check that shit out if you haven't. But um, yes, at number three, Juvenile, 400 Degrees. At number two, I have Scarface with The Diary. Man, this album here, boy. Goodness gracious, came out in 94. And this was this was this was the album that made me cause I got like I mentioned before, if you watch part one where I had uh Ghetto Boys We Can't Be Stopped album and I was talking like that was Ghetto Boys was like a group I was able to appreciate as I got older, you know, as a group. But like Scar this album this was the album that made me like, you know, pay attention to Scarface. I'm like, holy shit, like this is the same dude from the Ghetto Boys? Like he's I mean, you know, he's making this type of music, like albums like this. For it to be so deep, so introspective, stuff he's talking about on there is still relevant to today. And of course, he got the Ice Cube feature on there. I mean, what more? What more do you want on this album? Like this album, I think this album, at least from from my understanding, at least when I was coming up, like it's, it's it really started making people say, "Yo, look, this Scarface dude is a problem. This dude is serious." So um, as an MC, like people started taking him serious as an MC when he came out with the Diary. People already kind of you know knew of him. Not knew of him, but I already knew he, he gets busy with the Ghetto Boys. But I think with the diary, him showing that he can stand on his own, man, that shit was crazy. Like, that shit is still, like, not even just one of my favorite Southern hip-hop albums, but just one of my favorite albums just in hip-hop, period. So, yes, Scarface, number two with the diary. And finally, number one, um, I think this probably comes to no surprise or... Surprise for some of y'all that I'm gonna name this album, but eight um outcast AT Aliens. That's my number one man. This is this is this is this is my number one. This is definitely my number one 
favorite Southern uh, hip hop album. But at this time, when this album came out, like, this was like, I loved it so much. It was because it just reminded me of just like some Southern Tri Call Quest shit. Like, to hear them come from Southern playlisted Cadillac music to this, like, with this, just the sound, the production, the way dark. The more serious, more serious, more serious content on this on this album um, comp uh, compared to their first one. Uh, I thought this was definitely a super uh, breath of fresh air. And in that year, '96, like it really, that was the one. It wasn't. It didn't get them on that mainstream map like Equipment I did, but like ATLs was kind of like holy shit. You know, this these motherfuckers are serious. And you know, of course, it's funny talking with like Rod and Ken, like other that guys that grew up in the South, like. How they wasn't, you know, most dudes wasn't really taken taken into the ATL and sound at first. They was they still wanted a southern playlistic, kind of like funky music type of sound type of album from Outkast. So for them going this direction, some people didn't take too fun of it, but I fucking loved it. Cause like I said, it just put me in that holy shit. These dudes on some like southern quest shit, but still different. I mean, not like just like Tri Call Quest, but like it was just still different. It was still them. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what made it so amazing and it, this was like an album that you know just like Quim and I you can kind of pop it in let it play and just like let it let that bad boy ride man I, elevators freaking uh uh jazzy bell uh babylon extraterrestrial like just yeah the, al oh, the album closes for that man like that man the uh, elevators remix over the wood like it was so so much dope shit man so much dope shit is them out quotables from Andre and Big Boy like crazy. I think this album is so complete because I think even if this album with Equimini, Andre was like on some other shit. Like you, like I said, you can tell he was lyrically better than Big Boy. But I think with AT Aliens, it was still, they were still like neck and neck and it was still good for them to have dope ass verse because both of them got plenty of quotables throughout this whole album where I feel like Andre 1000 had like way more quotables than Equimini than Big Boy. But with AT Aliens, it was just like a match made in heaven, man. Like, this album was just like, from the album cover to the CD, if you got the CD, you got the Naked Woman and shit, man. Like, every, everything about this shit was great. Everything about it was great. So, yes, there it is. My number one, Outkast, AT Aliens. Um, you know, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's not a surprise. I know some, a lot of y'all probably predicted me having some somewhat of an Outkast album. I think some of y'all even predicted me having the Scarface album as number one, but it was close. It was close, but also too, man, I, I also want to mention some albums. I know some albums that didn't make this list, but I just want to like kind of give like an honorary mention for these albums. Uh, uh, Rick Ross, Teflon Don, uh, Lil Wayne, The Carter Three, uh, Mystical, Unpredictable, and his debut album, The Mind of Mystical. Um, uh, what's another one? A Ball, MJG, A Top of the World. Got to mention that one. Um, who else? Uh, T.I. Trap Music. I think I mentioned that in one of the earlier series uh, in this in this uh, video series. Oh, what else? Who else? Oh yeah, Ludacris, Chicken and Beer, which I said in Word of Mouth. I can switch both of those when they when they made my I think 24 or 23rd um, ranking. Uh, what else? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, Little John, Put Your Hood Up. Uh, the State versus Roger Davis. Uh, Gucci Mane. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? I think that's about it. Um, Missy Super Duper Fly, her debut album. Uh, Clips debut album, Lord Willing. Uh, just want to name some albums. Just like just some like the honorable mentions. You know, I think Carter. I said Carter three, Carter two. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, I mean I, that's that's what I can think of off the top of my head. As far as like just want to give an honorable mention to like just some albums that I feel like that need to be talked about uh, or at least mentioned on here you know i like i know i know some of y'all gonna be salty that i didn't have some of your favorite southern hip-hop albums on the list oh yeah j cole friday night lights that makes tape dope as hell forgot north carolina south um but yeah just thought i uh throw some album mentions at y'all man so don't be too mad hey look if you guys enjoyed it, the video like i said comment let me know what you guys think also like i said i got the previous uh parts part one through four also in the description box as well as my equipment i album review that I put in there too as well so um yeah man this this is it that this is this is this is it that was it my top 25 favorite southern hip-hop albums man I really really hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for always watching watching the previous videos and watching this one as well
Um, I might do Midwest. I mean, I know I did my top 25 Detroit. I think I'm gonna do Midwest next. I think I'm, I'm just going and I'm just gonna probably add some Detroit albums in there as well. But I think I might do my Midwest next. So it's, it's, Midwest definitely had a mark in hip hop culture, not and it, it you know I, I can do a top 25 of that one. I'm still I don't know what I'm gonna do about New York. I don't even know if I might even touch New York because it's just it's too too crazy when we do 25. And if I do 50, I'll be doing videos forever on this. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with New York. But other than that, man, this is it. Hope you guys enjoy this. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to do my... I want to do Rock Marciano uh, 64. Uh, Rock Marciano Bracket with his 64 favorite songs. And, and do that do that video for you guys. Um, might think about doing some more beat videos probably. Or I might start a Patreon and do that. I don't know. I'm um, still trying to figure out how some more stuff I can add on to this video. Uh, some more gaming stuff probably as well. But I'm uh, still thinking. But bear with me. Appreciate you guys for always subscribing and everything and I can't believe I'm still getting subscribers that's nuts really appreciate you guys but other than that man this is your boy BC430 man I'll check y'all out later peace